Zoe Thompson, uh, Head of Critical Infrastructure Protection with TALUS Cyber Security. Thanks very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. That's totally my pleasure, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. Zoe, we're here at Indo-Pacific 2025. Uh, it's a big show and here at the TALUS stand as well. But also we had TALUS uh, support our quad series, our Five Nations Partner Forum earlier, just before uh, IAC. Maybe introduce us to your role in terms of critical infrastructure protection uh, and then we'll sort of cover off on cyber security, personnel security, uh, and really what your pain points are for the clients. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. And, and thanks so much for having us. It's a really wonderful opportunity. So TALUS Australia, of course, is part of the defence industry. But we also have a, a section uh, that provides cyber premium services, cyber services. And our main strategic focus is to support national security for Australia. And that means because of the current trend of attacks on critical infrastructure, we're very focused on providing services for critical infrastructure in Australia. Now that is energy, water, gas, food and growth grocery, data processing and storage, telecommunications, transport, aviation sector, defence industry and space, as well as another a number of other sectors. Now what this means is that because we now need to provide services, cyber security services, that previously would be like defence grade services to these critical infra infrastructure industries, TALUS is very focused on this space because we have that expertise and also the experience to offer that. The reason it's part of our focus is because of, unfortunately, the way geopolitics has changed, the way that um, the the geopolitical dynamic has become much more volatile and we've seen, very unfortunately, an increasing trend on what is non-normative attacks on states which include attacks on critical infrastructures. And so, I guess for the layman, this means attacks on those essential services, food, water, telecommunications that we enjoy as Australians. And for this reason, TALUS Cyber Services is really focused on providing cyber security services for these sectors. Well, the threat, out, threat actors are nation states and at that level. Uh, we've also uh, uh, had TALUS on before on quantum safe and quantum ready encryption. So there's a massive transformation across all technology sectors. So it's not surprising uh, that defence uh, sort of sector companies are now coming in to this to help critical infrastructure. Personnel security uh, and the insider threat uh, is also a big factor that we're seeing in the market now. What is sort of the difference here that TALUS brings? And, particularly from your insights now with TALUS uh, Cyber. Uh, yeah, how, how do you sort of approach it that might be different to what a traditional cyber security company provides? Absolutely, it's such a good point, Chris. So we've heard from Mike Burgess recently about the degree of impact that foreign intelligence services are having. Foreign intelligence services, of course, are targeting Australia, they're targeting critical infrastructure, and one of a, a really cheap and effective high impact method for them is insider threat. It costs them almost nothing to insert a person, a, a malicious insider, into an organisation. They can steal proprietary information, they can um, achieve access which would support sabotage in a worst case scenario and that of course could have threat to life impacts. For TALUS Australia this is an area that we've been navigating for some time as a provider of critical infrastructure services and of course as the kind of organisation which provides or produces a lot of proprietary information that needs to be kept very carefully secured and of course it's a highly desirable target. What we are doing is extending, sharing our insights and experience with other critical infrastructure entities to try and secure that particular area. It's a very challenging area because the Security of Critical Infrastructure Act makes use of a number of different recognised frameworks in cyber security. Unfortunately, personnel security, although a really key feature of one of, like, one of the arms, the hazards of the Security of Critical Infrastructure regulatory regime, the frameworks that we use or are recognised are often not as comprehensive for personnel security as cyber. So it's an area where we see a lot of our clients, I guess, struggling to know how to achieve this. And because TALUS has been advising defence and supporting defence for so long, we have a depth of experience to bring to our clients here to share with them. I think, as you say, depth and breadth, actually, because uh, TALUS is a very international company. True. So you can bring that those skill sets in. Zoe, what's the, sort of the, the key message that you have for clients and to the, the strengths that you bring? Uh, for The other question I had was also going to be key profiles of critical infrastructure. Is there any sort of that stand out? There's 11 sectors as you put a, uh, listed there, but any sort of the stand out for you? And then uh, sort of the, uh, how, what do you bring to them? What's your key message? Yeah, 
really good question, thank you. So I guess the regulator, the Cyber and Infrastructure Security Centre, has just released in its third annual risk review and it was full of some very interesting insights. So I guess one of my, my calls to action would be if you're in the critical infrastructure industry or if you're a supplier to that industry or a consumer of those services, and that, that really covers pretty much everyone, yeah. If you're involved, I really would have a read of that. There were some great insights, particularly around personnel security, but also on cyber security. I would also encourage people in the critical infrastructure industry to read CI Fortify, which is something that the regulator, the CISC, has produced to help companies understand their responsibilities. And this is a little bit beyond what the regulation requires. It's more like responsible behaviour as a CI operator in Australia. One of the things that was very interesting in there that um, I think people should really look at is the ability to isolate, to operate in an isolated scenario from the internet. So that talks to being able to isolate OT networks or assets from the internet for a three month period. Now that is an extraordinary requirement for any critical infrastructure operator to consider and it's it's put forward by government for a really good reason. We really do need to think about what might happen if we were operating in a severely curtailed scenario if there was a conflict like scenario for example and if you were a health sector um, entity, if you were a hospital for example operating an intensive care unit, how would you operate without connection to the internet? Could you do it, formulate a bit of a graduated plan to understand what you could isolate and what absolutely must be connected? That then leads you to think about what platforms and services are you consuming that are offshored? Now this is really critical because if you are using cloud services it may be that you're transacting data offshore and what that means is that because of data localization trends globally, there are some nations in the world who have these global, like these local regulations which would allow them to access any data in their nation. This is really important to think about if you're a critical infrastructure operator, because if you need to isolate, you may not be able to access that data that you've offshored. So it's a really difficult thing for critical infrastructure entities to navigate because of the cost, but it's also very important for them to understand their dependencies on data service providers. The other thing I would call out is that you are absolutely not alone as a critical infrastructure entity, and there are a lot of um, other entities out there like you, and sharing and collaborating is really key, and also sharing and collaborating with government with the CISE and also with the ASD, Critical Infrastructure Operational Technology Environment Team. They have a lot of great resources. Nice. So I think you've explained the complexity and the sophistication that uh, we're all operating in now, uh, particularly as critical infrastructure operators. Enjoy the rest of Indo-Pacific here in Sydney uh, for 2025. But uh, as Head of Critical Infrastructure Protection for TALUS Cyber, thanks very much for joining us on Australia. Thank you TV. so much, Chris.